Yeah. So David, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you very well. Thank you. People are joining through online. We have got Professor Mao from Tianjin. Professor Mao, can you introduce yourself to our colleague from British Council, Shanghai, uh, Mr. David Wang? Okay. Hi, Professor Mao. Nice to meet you virtually. Professor Mao, your uh, microphone is off. Your microphone is off. Yeah, okay. Okay. Got it. So you can introduce yourself to Professor Mao to Mr. Wang, please. Uh, okay, Professor Wang, Professor David, uh, it's my pleasure to attend this workshop. Uh, I come from Tianjin University. My major is environmental science. And uh, my research interest is environmental planning and management. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for joining, Professor Ma. And then oh, the 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 it's working now. Now, okay, now. David, can you hear Professor Wang? Yes, I can hear now. Uh, the previous sound has some noisy echo once, but now it's okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so first of all, thank you uh, for all your coming. Uh, welcome uh, Professor uh, Mao and David and Tapas uh, to join our uh, this more workshop uh, related to the um, uh, our co uh, collaborated uh, um, project. So, uh, so I will give a short introduction about uh, um, our, uh, the project related to today's uh, workshop. Uh, you know that uh, Tapas and I already have uh, worked for uh, 10 years related to the water um, pollutant decontamination. Uh, so um, in, I remember in 2017, right? I, I, uh, we have a um, collaborative project, project funded by the Shanghai Municipal uh, Science and Technology it's an international uh, collaborative project related to the water de decontamination. So uh, this time, this project is based on our previous um, collaborative project. Uh, it's a, um, a successive um, um, research. Model. So we hope that through this project, we can um, strengthen our collaboration, uh, including the, um, from the support from the academia and the industry. So uh, this afternoon, uh, uh, Professor Mao Rank will give a uh, um, uh, presentation about uh, the uh, uh, related to this project, yeah, uh, this cooperation uh, in the future. And the students from East China University of Science and Technology and uh, uh, University of Central Lancashire will also um, share with us uh, uh, their, uh, their, their thoughts about the uh, related to, to, to this project. So I think I, and I, I hope that through uh, today's workshop, we can strengthen our collaboration uh, further in the future and seek more collaborative um, uh, opportunity. So welcome everybody. Thank you so much, Lindsay. I think, uh, David, you can actually now start talking about the British Council Going Global Project and how you have selected or how you will focus our project as a part of the case study. 
And I did mention to you that we had the interview. I completed one and a half hour two weeks ago. And then today, uh, Professor Wang had an interview with the same organization. And then you can update how these things are going. Mr. Uh, David Wang, please, yeah. Dear Professor Wang Lingzhi, um, Professor Mao, uh, Dr. Sen, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very delighted to be speaking at uh, this workshop. The UK and China have had uh, in place a series of strategic uh, framework agreements on educational collaboration since uh, 2000. Over the years, we have seen the strategic education and the research partnerships between the UK and China develop significantly. There are many achievements to celebrate in our bilateral education relationship. Since 1978, we have welcomed more than three quarters of a million mainland Chinese students to study for UK qualification. More than 150,000 mainland Chinese students are currently studying in the UK. 61,000 mainland Chinese students enrolled to study for a British degree in China by TN programs. UK-China higher education links has also got a significant uh, pass over the last two decades. The British Council Going Global Program is a very good example to facilitate those partnerships. Going Global Partnerships builds a stronger, more inclusive, internationally connected higher education. The Going Global Partnership supports collaborations between universities, colleges, education policy makers, civil society organizations, and industry partners in the UK and China. By building stronger international connections, the Going Global Partnerships strengthens higher education systems enables research collaboration, internationalize institutions, enhance students' outcomes, and supports inclusion. China is the UK's second largest research partner. We support a collaboration between scientists and the research institutions in the UK and China to work collaboratively to address global challenges such as energy, health, climate change, food poverty, and the global security. The multifunctional narrow composites in the waste weight treatment workshop today is a good example of scientists of both sides to develop an innovative nanotechnology solution to detect and separate toxic contaminants from toxic water, thus to address pollution challenges originated from industrial wastewater and the municipal sewage systems. I believe these partnerships between the University of Central Lancashire and the East China University of Science and Technology, funded by the Going Global Partnership, will strengthen the mutual understanding of both sides. Further, joint uh, researches, joint uh, PhD students training and exchanges, as well as talent skills development by innovative collaboration in many other areas as well. Last but not least, I would like to thank you 
all of the participants today and the wish this workshop a great success. Thank you again. Thank you so much, David. I think, um, David, you did mention that you have got another meeting to join, but if you don't mind, will you be able to listen my talk as well as Professor Mao before you leave? Yeah, I, I will uh, continue for... Uh, Thank you. For, yeah. I know you're very busy, but I thought I would give you an update what we are doing at this moment with reference to this project. So can you actually uh, share my slides here? My my presentation. Doctor yeah. Sam. Yes, yes, to me. Uh, yeah. Now, can you see my slides? Yeah, I go back through this way. Yeah, no problem. Can you see my slide, David and Professor Mao? David, can you see? Yes, yes. Yes, we can see very clearly, no problem. Yeah, no okay. problem. So you can see that my title today is Multifunctional Nanocomposites in Wastewater Treatment is the project title. To begin with, I just thought that I must acknowledge British Council of China for funding this project. So I sincerely thank you, David, and your organization for supporting our common goal, which is to do some collaboration between the two countries for the benefit of the society, benefit of the environment, for better living. Okay, and you can see that you know I have picked up the results declared in December 2021, and at that time, under glowing global project, you funded 12 projects. And out of 12 projects, one of them is our project number six, okay? So thank you for that. Now, once again, I would like to thank you, David, and your organization that you selected our project is one of the projects for case study. And consequently, me and Professor Wang had the opportunity to share our experience to your wider you know, uh, audience through your strategy uh, which is called Higher Education Strategic Associate in Canada and as well as Ireland. Now, if you want to go, David, you probably do not know exactly my university. So I have one slide to show you where we are located. We are located very close to Manchester and Liverpool. And then it's not far from London as well. If we take a train from my university station, which is called Preston to London, it's two hours by train. And Manchester is like 40 minutes drive. Liverpool is also 49 minutes drive. And we are in the northwest part of <coughs> United Kingdom. So that's my university view while I drive through the river uh, Ribble. And then this is our brand new university square, which you can see uh, you know, in the center bottom. And you can also see the ranking of my university in terms of world global world ranking, top 7% university in the world, number of students is 35,000. And then we have got 550 plus courses and we have invested 200 million, which is 0.2 billion pounds for last five years to build the infrastructure, new buildings. And next slide, which I wanted to show you, the partnership. So in this partnership, we have got two main uh, partner, one from East China University, uh, Professor Wang, and I'm leading the project from UK. And then we have got an industrial partner, and we have got an associate collaborator from Tian uh, Sua University, and Dr. Dai Zhang. Dr. Dai Zhang happened to be in UK as a lecturer, and he came to my university several times. So I have included him, but today both of them have got some other commitments so they couldn't actually join and they send us some sort of apology for that and then we have got two uh, young researchers one of them is mrs uh, ferial mar who is a phd student of professor mao from pianjian university so ferial is currently working in my research group but 
see the joint PhD student with Professor Mao, and we are trying to build further fellowship through this new grant under British Council so that she can continue working with Professor Mao and me for beyond this project timeline. And we also have got two PhD students with Professor Wang's group. One of them is directly linked with this project, which is Dr. Tang Zuen Sen, and you can see over here. So this is our consortium. Now, if I go to a little bit about how the project is going at this moment and how it has evolved. If you look extreme late, as Professor Wang has already explained to us that our collaboration has not just began, we began our collaboration in 2011. So we have more than 10 years collaboration before we submitted this proposal. So you can see on the left, we have been working on this specific program where we can develop a lot of nanomaterials for purification. So in this specific project, what we have done it, we wanted to implement our research to the real life scenario through industry. <laughs> so we have got an industrial partner, we have got a new partner beyond uh, Shanghai, which is the Beijing, yeah, Tsinghua University. And then in the first one year, zero to nine months, we had a plan to develop these materials in a large scale. Yeah, so we have managed to develop these materials in a large scale. And then we have a uh, second phase of the research between first year and the middle of the second year. We will think about creating the modules, which we are thinking of delivering together. And then we also think about how we can implement our materials in the context of industry through feed water. And then the final phase, which is the second year phase, we want to submit peer review publications. We want to submit a research grant to extend this one for long-term sustainability. And we also want to deliver an international conference in addition to that small workshop, one in China, one in UK. So that's the whole idea. And this is our vision for next four years, how we want to extend this collaboration beyond this timeline. So we have found this call under British Council again, and this call has got a deadline of 25th of September, and we have already built the consortium now. And you can see the project title now is quite interesting, Implementation of Translational Research. So what we are doing at this moment, the research, transforming to the industry. Now we want to transform this transformational research, which is TNR to TNE, which is transformational education, correct? And in that specific project, we are focusing on environmental water ecosystem as a transformational education in a global United Nations environmental policy. And we will have two project lead, one me from the UK, and Professor Hello. It seems your sound lost Dr. Sen. Me too. I cannot hear the voice. Just give us a moment, yeah? Yeah, can you hear me now, David? Yes. yes. Okay, so, it's okay. It's okay we'll share the, um, we'll share the uh, PowerPoint again. Okay. Uh, if I try to change it, maybe you can go to the slide mode now, slide mode. A slide down, down, down. That's okay. So, can you hear me now, David? Yes, I can hear you well. Good. So, what I wanted to say that we have already created the consortium to go beyond this timeline, and we have Professor Mao, who already agreed to lead from China, and the whole idea is that we have got a researcher who is doing PhD with Professor Mao. 
currently working with me in this project and we want to get the new project so that the researcher can continue beyond this project timeline. Is it clear, David? So that's the whole idea for the new project. So if you go to the little bit of research, you can see that where are the challenges? In 2030, by 2030, if we have some sort of forecast that 22% of the global you know, water demand will be by 2030 in the power and industrial needs. Similarly, if you look for residential or commercial, again, 20% of the total market volume is focused in Asia, China, urbanization, development of industries. And then if you look for global wastewater and water reuse, which is again 15% of the total related to the membrane technology microfilter. And if you look the global market value, if you look over here in terms of growth, in terms of US uh, 2021, it is actually 1.6 billion US dollar. By 2027, it's predicted to be 2.7 billion US dollar in terms of you know, development in the specific area, which is wastewater treatment. And if you look the application segment area, industrial wastewater is taking a huge amount, 2021 to 2027, the growth focus in compared to portable water system. So what we are doing, we are doing the right thing to target what we need for the better environment in the context of United Nations goal. Here we have got little bit of research which David uh, probably uh, may not understand properly, uh, but I just wanted to give you a focus. We are developing materials which has got some sort of magnetic properties. So what does it mean? If you apply the magnetic field, then they will go towards the magnet. And we modify these nanomaterials surface with whatever we want to take out from water as a pollutant. So the pollutant could be industrial wastewater containing you know, toxic metal ions. It could be also microbial, bacteria, virus. So if you have a bacterial infection or virus infection in water, we can modify the surface of the tiny magnetic bits of our own interest with biomolecules. And then if you throw to the polluted water, they will pull everything out. And we have a nice video, but I'm not sure whether we can uh, show in this specific computer, maybe not. So yeah, it is working. You look, I can I show you. it over here and I wanted to demonstrate that is so not that difficult to make it for demonstration. So now look, this is the magnetic stand where you have got the magnet and I'm trying to put it over here and see if they can go towards the magnet. Yeah, so you see that tiny magnetic iron oxide particles, they stick to the magnet immediately. And if I take the magnetic field out and then start it a little bit, uh, and you see that it comes to the suspension again. Yeah, so it's a black suspension. So that is the iron oxide mag magnetic nanoparticle. So what I'm saying that in that suspension, you have got millions of tiny particles with the nanometer length scale. And this tiny particle, if you modify the surface, they can pull out anything towards the magnet and you can see that is a clean water system. You have seen just now in that video that you have a very clean water system. You can decant it directly and you get a clean water. So that's the whole idea of the project. <laughs> so with reference to the microfiltration, we are working on geolites, which is very powerful for water industry, for exchange of heavy metal ions. So those geolite nanoparticles, we are using as a building blocks to produce this fine membrane, which is membrane filtration. These are nanometer layer scale. So each and every nanoparticles of geolites build it in the form of a membrane. And if you look this membrane in a in a high magnification, so this is actually the membrane looks like in your open eye is actually a, a, a chunk of solid. But if you look through the electron microscope, that means we are magnifying the materials in higher and higher magnification. You see the beauty of this membrane. Can you see? So these membranes are very powerful for removal of bacterial and viral infection from water toxicity. Similarly, 
you can apply the magnetic field to separate them by magnetically, which is one step magnetic separation. So that's the whole idea behind our project that these magnetic particles, if we modify in the membrane, <laughs> we can separate bacteria, we can separate virus from water, which are pollutant water. Okay. Now, if you look the next slide, which is again, you see them highly magnetic. So these tiny particles in the membrane are magnetic particles. So that means you can apply the magnetic field to separate them easily. And then you can capture all the virus and bacteria from water to get a decontaminated clean water system. If you go to the next slide, we have a patent filed out of this nano composites, which is very powerful for dental water system. We have used this one for medical field, which is dental water line, because when people go to the dentist, usually they pump water during their dental surgery or cleaning. And this water could have a lot of bacteria and virus. So we were working in the dental industry and we use these nanocomposites, which are for decontamination of bacteria and virus from water in the dental water line. So we have got a patent and we are looking for licensing as an intellectual property. So this is the latest uh, outcome from the project. We have developed a very cost efficient materials which can take out a very toxic chemical from water that is called arsenic. You probably know arsenic is a major issue in China, India, Bangladesh, and many parts of the world, uh, world because of the groundwater pollution coming from Himalayas. <clears throat> Tibet, for example. So many, many uh, river water is polluted with arsenic. And if arsenic is one of the pollutants in river water, then you can think of the whole ecosystem because you know the river animals like fish, they consume this water and then you eat the fish, we can be contaminated with arsenic even in a developed world. Developing world, they don't have any water circulation system like Bangladesh. There are a lot of people who get affected by arsenic pollution. So what we have done over here, we are using these tiny nano composites made up of organic resins. And these organic resins, we modify with magnetic bits and then you get the color change. You see the orange color is the organic resin. But if you modify with magnetic particles, which is iron oxide, that becomes dark black. And this dark black nanocomposites, you can see the performance of capturing arsenic. If you start with 500 ppm, having a different uh, cycles, you know, first cycle you reduce from 500 ppm to less than 100 ppm, 24 ppm. A huge capture efficiency of arsenic by this type of nanocomposites. But the question is, can you reuse the material again and again? So you can see the recycling ability. We tested one, two, three, four cycles, and you can see the performance of the material skip, you know, uh, retain. And you can see that there is a slight reduction in terms of capture efficiency. You see from 24 ppm to 35 ppm. So that is again within the limit of United Nations health requirement, which is less than 50 ppm. So if you have a water contaminant with 50 ppm, which is acceptable. And the right side, again, you can look another materials, <laughs> a similar performance of capturing arsenic. So this is what we have done it. And then uh, this is very latest result out of this project money we invested. We have developed a technology, which is again related to the water coming from groundwater and wastewater. And you probably know fluoride. Fluoride is very essential for our bone, you know? So sometimes, you know, when you use the dental paste containing fluoride, but there are many parts in the world, they have got over fluoride in groundwater and wastewater. And if you consume a lot of fluoride in water, then you can have a disease called fluorosis. So you can have a huge problem in the health. So we are now investing developing a materials containing zirconium in the magnetic base. So you can see the magnetic particle with zirconium concentration we modified with zirconium and then we detected through different technology like scanning electron microscope, X-ray diffraction, and then we have done uh, X-ray analysis, which indicate that we have got zirconium 
And then we wanted to taste the performance of these materials for capturing fluoride. And if you start with 8 ppm fluoride concentration, then you can see the capture efficiency can go down below 2 ppm, which is again United Nations goal that any fluoride concentration should be less than 2 ppm in drinking water. Okay, so that case we are in a one step forward, not just the heavy toxic metal ions, we are also targeting another pollutant, which is fluoride, which is an anionic pollutant. That's why we are using zirconium as a cation to capture the fluoride from water system. And if you look again the cycle, how many times materials can be utilized? We have done up to five cycles, which is reasonable, less than 2 ppm capture efficiency. So if you start with 8, 8 ppm fluoride in water, we end up having less than 2 ppm, which is again United Nations goal. Okay, so that is what we are doing in the part of research. But you, we don't stop by doing research. We also want to go beyond our uh, research community to the general public. So I'm heavily involved with outreach activity in Lancashire area. We are active member of the Lancashire Science Festival. And this is the researcher who work in my research group. You can see in the left side, they all stand and career is in the center. You know, uh, I don't know how to indicate. Uh, you see, if you look my photograph, first student, then a postdoc, Dr. Al Urban Ali, did PhD with me, and then Ferial, who joined in this project. And then we have got another postdoc, another PhD, another student from France, and another student from France. And you can see in the right side, we have a huge audience which are coming from the students in the primary and secondary school, their teachers, their parents, general public, they all came together and listened what we have been doing with China and India as a part of environmental research. So with that, I think I gave you an overview, David, and Professor Mao and the audience that we not only work in the laboratory with the industry, but we also promote our research initiative to the younger generation so that when we disappear from this world, they will take forward our vision for the for their own future, their next generation. With that, I think I finished my presentation and I think uh, we can invite Professor, okay. If you have any question, David or Professor Mao, I'm more than happy to answer. I don't have questions for you at this moment, Dr. Sun. And uh, if I have one in the future, I will come back to you later. Um, you know, before I drop off for another meeting, I would like to congratulations on your achievement so far. And uh, I understand that your project uh, starts far more, far earlier than, than the going global bidding process and uh, particularly your achievement linked to the public engagement and uh, outreach event benefits the local community and uh, schools. Uh, that's really impressive. I, I, I really congratulate on your success. Uh, before I drop off and uh, I would like also mention an uh, Another opportunity is here. I put on the chat. Can you see it? Can you see the chat box? Uh, chat yeah. box, yeah. And I put a form. Actually, it is a call for application for any Chinese researchers, younger researchers, to apply for the opportunity to join the British Council's Research Connector workshop. It will be a two weeks training programs. It, all fund, all costs will be borne by the British Council. Uh, there will be two experienced UK uh, researchers, con consultants will deliver the training programs to younger researchers in the area of how to write their international thesis, write, uh, you know, bidding, bidding proposals and or develop uh, the get your journals published. Uh, so it's all about improve younger researchers' international communication skills. 
So I, 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 I promote here and uh, if anyone, younger researchers or PhD students who are interested in this opportunity, just to submit an application. That's all Thanks. from me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sen and uh, Professor Wang for your kind invitation. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, uh, David, Mr. Wang, to join and sharing the opportunity for the Chinese PhD students and young researchers. And I will actually support them. If they're interested, I can support them as my role as a UK partner. And we will definitely promote your cause, OK? Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, I also, you know, really look forward to meet you sometime in the future. And oh, I, I hope, I hope uh, um, Professor uh, Professor Gao's presentation, a great success. Is Professor Gao is still here or he, he's Mr. Mao. Mao is presenting now, yeah. Oh, Gao is presenting. Okay, good. Can I say David? Tomorrow uh, I have spoken to Professor Wang and she has got another important meeting tomorrow. But I can come to your office if you send me the uh, address and the nearest metro station, subway station, I can come and see you. Okay, let's let's uh, uh, try to make the appointment separately. Uh, I don't want to disrupt your 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 workshop here now. So bye bye. If you send an email today, I will try my best to join okay. tomorrow. See you, okay? Okay, cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. So uh, now Professor Mao will present, yeah? Okay, thank you. Professor Mao? Uh, is he still there? No. Has he left already? I don't know. No. Is it? Um, I'm just thinking. Is yeah? Can is it possible to invite to Zoom? I don't have this. Okay, we can do something. Is it possible, um, is it to contact uh, WeChat to Ferian? I think he's talking about Ferian. If you contact uh, Ferial, Ferial. You Ferial. have no WeChat? I don't, no WeChat? I don't have his number in WeChat, but if you contact Ferial, Ferial can ask Professor Mao to join. Yeah, that's fine. Just to send a message, Professor Mao. Has it? What is it? Are we sure presentation of course of that as well? No, that is he. David has written this one. No, okay. David has written that text message because he is leaving. So he has said to Professor Mao that I wish presentation may get success. But if you contact Ferial via WeChat, that Ferial can contact to Professor Mao. Lindsay, can you contact Sylvia? Yeah, I have already. I guess uh, she's not communicating. No. What's the problem? He knows he will do the presentation. What time is uh, her presentation? Uh, his presentation? Uh, three o'clock, right? 
So maybe I don't know whether he's coming at three. Um, because we are going quickly, right? First. So we can ask Professor Mao to present now, you know. Or he can present now if you want. Yeah, I want to hear. Is it okay for me? You can present now, yeah? And then uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I No, no problem. We can start. Everything. We can finish early then, yeah. Okay. 这对于时间高效能性化是非常重要的双金属的混合物或者是化合物然后它的组分是由既单元和M单元构成的 而是通过NEO水泥胶的一个动态收缩回弹的这样一个刺激响应的 并且能通过C的C组中的Mapping可以看出它是碳部铁元素分别是均匀分布的 呃，之后的话是对无制备的氧化木进行一个表征层递补中，可以看出它是具有纳米片状的结构。然后E图的话是呃缺陷在氧化木和商品化氧化木的一个一撇，嗯，可以看出它商品化氧化木是没有无加木
有嗯呈现出一个嗯二，开始呈现出一个二甲肽，嗯，并且呢，它没有嗯，它没有一个明显的电解谱，说明它是嗯处于发面结构性的。然后 X 轴的话是它的一个开开空间的震荡，可以看出它是有快速的递进震荡，显示出铁铁原子周围的无序性。然后 R 轴的话是它的二空间。在二点一和二点六分别对应于铁碱单键和铁氧双键。从这个结果可以看出，它是，嗯、呃，水泥胶中的铁原子是只有只与氧原子进行一个对对对。最后，嗯，采用李飞罗尼和刘庆框架分别研究水泥胶里面的二价铁和三价铁离子的含量。嗯、呃，从图中可以看出，当添加氧化木之后，再加入 T S 之后，五分钟内它的。二价铁离，呃，二价铁离子溶浓度降低到百分之六十，然后之后的二十五分钟进行一个快速的回弹，啊，没有加入氧化木之后，它的铁离子是持续下降的。然后通过它的一个循环的测试，可以看出在循环测试之后，呃，水泥胶中仍然有百分之九十九十一的二价铁离子。当不添加氧化木的时候，它的水泥胶是会发生一个。呃，因为因为三二价铁氧化成三价铁而发生一个收缩，并且颜色加深。呃，当我们将它放到抗坏血酸溶液中，可以使其恢复原来的形状。而、啊、加入氧化木之后，它在呃它在强氧化剂的存在下，仍然保持原有的形状和颜色。呃，尽管加入抗坏血酸可以让它还原，但是它的稳定性却在不断的下降。然后呃，进一步我们用呃万能试验机研究了。加入氧呃氧化木和没加氧化木的海藻酸铁水凝胶的一个机械韧性，从 E 图中可以看出它的一个抗压强度是呃提高了二十倍，然后 S 图也可以通过，当加入氧化木之后，它的弹性模量占主导，而不加的话是呃粘性模量占主导。嗯，之后具备了嗯体貌较大的一个块状的氧化木对作为对比，呃这张 PPT 明显可以看出它是呃当当注水化剂的形貌变大，或者是呃溶液的体积变大的时候，就会受到嗯、呃、三价铁离子到二价铁离子的转化，就会受到影响。可以看出，三价铁离子从较大体积的中扩散到注水化剂的表面是比较困难的。嗯，并且呢，在存在竞争吸附或者是呃强的配位嗯、呃、落合剂的时候，也会呃也会受到一些干扰。之后的话，嗯，进一步合成了木酸铁，进一步合成了木酸铁，然后研究了它在加入强氧化剂之后，呃，铁和木原子，铁和木的一个加态变化，可以看出，当加入强氧化剂之后，它的表面基表面的铁离子均被氧化了。嗯、呃，这个结果说明，电子从木到铁上的转化是比较，是效率比较低的。然后，呃，然后也。落合了双金属的一个海藻酸钠水凝胶，这里面是没有添加注水化剂的。这个结果可以，呃，在在经过强氧化剂氧化的时候，它的铁和镍都发生了一定程度的氧化。这个结果可以看出，嗯，对于，呃，对于金属离子的话，它是和 T S 反应速率是比较相当的。而我们进一步研究了铁离子和氧化木对于 T S 的一个。呃，动力学曲线发现它们之间是有巨大较大差异，因此当铁离子被氧化之后，可以通过氧化木来将它进行还原。嗯、呃，之后通过用钙离子取代百分之七十的二价铁离子，制备出了一个钙铁同时较粘的海藻酸钠氧化木的水凝胶。啊，这个水凝胶的话，它是就不具有一个呃动态收缩和回弹的性能。从、呃、这个结果可以看出，嗯，钙铁同时较粘的水凝胶，它在加入 T S 前五分钟之后，它可以将二氧铁浓度维持比较高的水平，是因为它，呃，它所提供的一个负极的效果。呃，然而它没有动态收缩回弹的这个属性，因此的话，在后面的二十五分钟，它的铁离子是二氧铁离子是缓慢提升的。嗯，呃，之后的话，将二氧铁离子换成木离子和镍离子，然后再。呃，强氧化剂氧化之后，木和镍同时保持一个，同样也保持一个较低的价态。如果将里面的氧化木换成其他的缺陷态氧化物，比如说氧化锶或者是氧化钨，呃，甚至是含有氮空位的氮化碳，同时也能将海藻酸钠中的二价铁离子
呃，画家简金的维持一个比较高的水平。然后下面的图是这位的曲线分养中的 S R D 和 D P R。嗯，之后的话就是将这个嗯铁海藻酸氧通过嗯 T S 体系用于降解牡丹磷地，然后 A 图的话是它的一个对于牡丹磷地降解的动力的实现，可以看出，嗯、呃，在这个水凝胶体系它是有比较高的一个嗯、呃、动力的常数的，呃、啊、嗯，然后是 K 等于零点二九每分钟，嗯，之后由于它优异的性能，我们将它用于八个小时的对于高浓度牡丹磷地的一个持续的降解。嗯，在每半个小时之后，每半个小时的时间点添继续添加牡丹牡丹磷地，然后可以看出，在经过八个小时之后，呃，海藻，呃，这个体系它的对于牡丹磷地的浓度可以维持在五到十毫克每升，而对于传统的分论来说，嗯、呃，它的体系里的浓的牡丹磷地的浓度是持续增高的，然后最终达到了九十六毫克每升，并且这个实验它排除了呃吸附的影响。嗯，之后总结的话就是，嗯，这个研究它是，呃，基于一个纳米微反应器的构建，并且可以这个微反应器可以整合粉状的铸成化剂和分段泥，呃，分段试剂铁离子，这种动态收缩回旋动网状结构可以使三价铁和二价铁离子进行营销的循环，并且呢，这个微反应器里面的复制子的环境可以，呃，让可以实现在中心条件下的一个分段反应。Right. So it's quite a good work, actually. I mean, uh, he, he, so you are thinking to publish this one, eh? I'm preparing an answer, yeah. Uh, you know, I've got one question on EPR. Uh, your uh, G value is yeah, nearly the same, only thing the, the intensity is a different, isn't it? The intensity of the, the peak. The EPR spectra. If you go to the EPR spectra uh, over there, yeah. So you see here, the G values are nearly same: two point zero zero three, two point zero zero three, two point zero zero five. But only thing the intensity changes. So so basically, this indicates the phantom conversion ion to ion three. So you are looking ion uh, G value in the pool. Is it ion? You are looking. You know the EPR, which uh, yeah. a radical ion you're looking. It's a unpaired electron, isn't it? EPR. So the unpaired electron is associated with ion or copper, a cobalt or tungsten. So it's a free electron from the oxygen vacancy. Yeah. So it's coming from the. Uh, yeah, the free electron, free electron, unpaired electron, right? So that is, uh, the G value is nearly the same. The intensity is slightly changing, isn't it? Okay. You can wait, uh, Professor Mark, minutes, yeah. to 3 p.m. finish today. We don't want to carry it and we want to put it on. Leave it, leave it. Leave it, leave it. Then. So leave it. If you don't, no, that's fine. I think it's okay. Because uh, it's for them also, it's very difficult, you know, because it's early morning. I promise for the presentation. For some Yeah. You will present to your club. Okay, we will wait. 10 minutes, yeah. But if he will not appear at uh, the time, time. But so have you managed to uh, speak to Peri or no? Peri is not I, uh, well, you, you can ask her or can call also. I have already sent a message to, to her, but, but no. Peri is not responding. Oh, okay. So I think it's too early in, in, in it's not early, no, it's 8 o'clock. I already finished the things you want to, to, to do right? yeah, so yeah. for the interview and with, yeah, uh, yeah, interview with David. David yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. fine. I think I've done, I'm happy. So we can conclude now. If Mao is, Professor Mao is presenting, it's okay. It said he is trying to connect, reconnect. Well, okay. I don't know what's the problem. Thank you, you for presenting. Yeah, we can have some
partner. I don't know what's the problem. Who? Mom. He said. Kaya. Just do that. Oh, is saying that Professor Mao can't connect. It's okay. Okay. You can do it later. Empty one up. But Professor Mao was online already. I know. Send it. You, you ask her. I will give you this, okay? You have a fire. Huh? We chat. I think so. Of course you have. Yeah, I will call him just a minute. Mm. I mean, it's okay. If he doesn't uh, yeah, join, then you can conclude it, no problem. Um, you bust. Let's see if it's open. No, for you, you know that the Zoom in China is not commonly used. I yeah, don't I know. What's the, the, the NAT restriction? What's the problem? But it's okay. Okay, can you actually let me listen? I can contact mom. Mouse WeChat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgot mouse WeChat. <coughs> he can connect. You need to, if he, you want him to connect, you need to resend a link. Oh, I see. Okay, but yeah. I think it's okay. If you, you no, can. but if he is ready to present, we have to present him. So, did you do it? The login? You use the computer to, to... WeChat? No, I wanted to speak to him. If you can give me the uh, Wi-Fi, then I can talk to him. Hey. You can finish all this thing, okay? Early, yeah. yeah. I think I'll get by the No, no, we don't need to present. Yeah, we've gone yeah. it now. If you have found it's done. It's done. I think I just wanted to do the Professor Mark today. Yeah, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Professor Ma, what you can't join in the meeting? It's not working. Uh, we are in a Zoom meeting. Just a minute. Uh, do you think that you can join to another media? Like, what is the other one you can join? Uh, invite? What is the Chinese? Uh, what is the name? Yeah, can you invite him? Can you invite him? Another, not Zoom, the other one. What is that? Uh, Tencent the meeting, yeah. If you invite him, he can present, yeah. Thank you. Just a minute, he is, uh, Professor Wang is inviting him. Okay, uh, we will do it, just a minute. So the zoom is not working at this moment. Okay, just Do you need his email address uh, to invite? 
Now we say material that we don't want them. Just give us a moment, yeah? We are connecting. Okay. 